Someone was praying to the Lord. His hands are folded in front of him. A plea to save this mortal world. The man who is praying now is not the prince of darkness. A human face is dimly visible in the reflection of the water. A brunette with long hair looks at his reflection in the water and wonders who he is. Where is it? Instead of one eye, he has a pink burning substance. He covered his face with his hands because his eyes are burning. Suddenly, his majesty was called by someone. A young man with something like a horn sticking out of his forehead took his hands away from his eyes and turned back, not understanding who was calling him. He saw a large female bust in front of him, and then a pink-haired girl who also had a purple horn sticking out, but also wings behind her back were visible. This girl turned out to be the captain of a level 7 personal security squad, sinus the purgatory department, soul threshold 15,313, and it was all written over her head in a strange way. She asked the young man if he was alright. Why is he using a magic source to extinguish the eternal raging flames? With panic on his face, his majesty shouted in his mind, Damn him, what is going on here anyway? Cassandra, the pink-haired girl and captain of the security detachment, told the gentleman that he was behaving very strangely. Is he unwell? The lord doubts that the girl speaks Chinese. But then why does he understand everything she says? He turned to the mirror and was afraid of the reflection in it. Is it really him? In the reflection stood a young man with a burning pink eye and a purple horn sticking out of his forehead. He was wearing a fur coat and bare-chested, and on his feet were strange trousers with what looked like purple claws. The young man asked, is it really him? Then he turned to Cassandra and began to turn his head back and forth in an attempt to figure out where he was. The girl looked at him and asked what happened. She threw herself into his arms. He's behaving very strangely. Did Seraphim do something to him? Cassandra turned out to be a succubus. In addition to the horn and large, beautiful purple wings, she also had a long, purple tail. The gentleman did not understand at all what was going on. What kind of seraphim and why he saw strange inscriptions above the girl's head. 15,313 is this some kind of fighting force? And she also has horns. Is she some kind of cosplayer? Everything looks real. Suddenly, something black shouted and called the girl. It looked like ghosts out of thin air. They had strange elongated faces. The young man looked around in disbelief. A huge tall dark figure appeared in front of him. The inscription above his head said that in front of him was Nilbar, the undead of the 8th level, the death squad, the commander of the army of demons. The threshold of souls is 18,632. This same Nilbar had turquoise glowing eyes, large horns and he himself was a tall skeleton in a cloak that was made as if of iron. He stood in the company of his spirit servants and appealed to the girl to show respect to their master and to watch your tongue. The so-called gentleman stared at Nilbar and asked who he was, and there were incomprehensible inscriptions above his head again. Kassanadra rudely replied to the commander so that he would mind his own business. However, he ignored the girl and appealed to the great prince of darkness that he had wounded Seraphim. The army is waiting for him to deliver the final blow. The girl jumped aside and shouted at Nilbar to get his undead away from her. Nilbar continued his monologue, addressing the master, because he had killed the enemy general and all that remained was to defeat the remnants of the army and break through to the Holy Land. Now is the key moment of their age-old war and the Lord cannot just retreat. The young man stared at the commander in incomprehension. What is the last blow? God, there are some strange sounds around. What the hell is going on here? Taking his head in his hands, the guy tried his best to remember what happened 15 seconds ago. He screamed out loud because his head was just bursting and he couldn't remember anything. The girl screamed and asked if he was okay, to which he replied that everything was fine, let them ignore it. The guy did not understand where he was and how he could even be in this strange place. Every time I try to remember something, my head starts to hurt terribly. And this strange body, it's definitely not his. If you look closely, then the creatures kneeling in front of him are definitely not cosplayers and it is unlikely that this is somehow a prank. The girl asked the commander what had happened to their master. Was he injured in the battle with the Archangel? Nilbar told her not to talk such nonsense, because their lord had won. The young man feels that everyone present sincerely worships him. Apparently, his soul had moved into the body of some important person. The colonel called the Prince of Darkness so loudly and sharply that he was scared shitless. We cannot delay time and we urgently need to go on the offensive. The pink-haired woman told the colonel not to shout at their master. However, the guy asked the commander if it was necessary to farm that Archangel. He did not understand such a strange word and asked the prince what it meant. The guy misspoke. Since they revere him so much, we must not allow them to suspect something strange. We need to get into the role somehow. The young man cleared his throat and ordered Cassandra and Nilbar to show him the way, to which they obeyed without question. The trio stood on a stone road where all the creatures knelt before the prince. G. Shaudua, a level 7 clairvoyant, the Nightmare Squad, and the head of Group 7 were there. The threshold of souls is 15,364. Next to him sat a huge elephant, level 7, cast steel squad, head of group 5. 
The threshold of souls is 16,818. You can, human, level 7, elemental squad and head of group 8. The threshold of souls is 13,872. Jai Feng Hong. Aka level 7 puppeteer, squad unknown, head of group 9. The threshold of souls is 11,394. Two creatures that look like huge dragons were sitting next to each other. Zhangchong level 7, locust squad and the head of the 6th group. The threshold of souls is 13,210. And Sai Chai, an ancient of the 8th level from the natural detachment, the head of the 3rd group and the threshold of souls is 17,365. When the guy saw them all bowing their heads in front of him, he was very surprised, because in front of him literally demons in the flesh, and they all really obey him. The commander standing behind reminded the gentleman that his squad was ready to attack and he had only to finish off Seraphim. Then he could attack the Holy Land. The guy still doesn't understand what he's talking about at all. The red-haired girl, Miranda, was sitting in the middle, between the other demons. She turned out to be the commander of a level 9 demon army. A squad of blood-sucking demons, a Sinusid. When he saw her, the guy was surprised that she was a commander because she was so beautiful. And just his type. Someone from the squad shouted to the gentleman that they would all follow him. But he was immediately besieged and told to show respect. The guy standing in front saw a steep mountain ahead and was scared because he is very afraid of heights. From a bird's eye view, he looked out over the expanse. And behind him was his squad ready to fight for him. There was an army of green demons and other creatures below. Cassandra stood looking up at the gentleman and asked why his legs were shaking so much. Down in the middle of a huge field, a man with long blonde hair was pierced on a steeple and people sat around him and mourned his torment. As far as the guy understood, this is the same seraphim that he defeated. Now he needs to be finally finished off. But how do you get to him? Can I fly? The young man waved his beautiful purple wings and could believe that he even had them. He could not even think that one day he would be able to fly. He flew up and was very scared of his flight, but he was suddenly caught by the hand of a huge giant. It turned out to be a giantess girl, and putting the lord on her shoulder, she said that it would be an honor for her to see him off. The giantess's name was Medini, commander of the 10th core of the 7th level demon army, wild squad, Sinusthe, threshold of souls 14,516. Later, Medina's huge hand lowered the overlord directly onto the battlefield, and later all of his above-represented warriors descended to him. The warriors who stood near the seraphim painted over so that the devil Sebastian would not approach them. They were not very high-level people, from the Divine Light Squad. They took their swords and pointed them at the guy, shouting that he should not even think about desecrating the seraphim. The young man thought that even a few hundred of these people would still not be enough, because they are very weak, and apparently, they're all afraid of him. Maybe we should just talk to them. One of the men shouted to his comrades that they would meet their deaths today, not for life but for death. Looking at them, the guy couldn't understand where this huge feeling of oppression and pressure came from. The numbers above the heads of these people have already exceeded 1,000 souls threshold. Cassandra stood nearby and was surprised that they were increasing the threshold of souls by increasing longevity. Let them die at least a hundred more times. For the overlord, they will still remain insignificant ants. And she laughed maliciously. The gentleman told her not to be so rude. People shouted at the guy to accept his death, but he thought that everything was happening too fast. A threat of the third degree appeared and the Lord was shouted to use a fire shield. The young man could not understand where this sound was coming from, which kept telling him about the fire barrier, that strange voice in his head. He replied that the flames were always raging and he urgently needed to use a barrier. Not expecting a quick attack, the guy's eyes went dark and he was surprised that he was hit, so he screamed loudly. There were the results of the school Olympiad, where there were three prizes. Su Feng is really cool, since he took the first place, and the students standing in front shouted at him. And the girls were making eyes, coquettishly tucking their hair behind their ears. A woman sitting on a bed with an IV drip wrote her son a message that today is the anniversary of his father's death. And she really asks him to buy flowers and go to the cemetery himself, because she is in the hospital and will not be able to go with him. At the flower shop, they handed him a bouquet with the words, these flowers will bring you happiness. The boy ran out onto the road to get the ball when the huge Kameis was rushing at full speed, and they shouted at him to be careful while the driver was trying to stop the car. There was a collision and the flowers turned blood red. God, save this mortal world. Slowly, the Lord began to open his eyes, and his thoughts were only about the car accident. Has he already died? So now he's looking at. Cassandra turned from a hot beauty in front of him into a terrible demon that kills enemies. The guy was scared by this sight, while the crowd was chanting her name. The opponents, seeing this, realized that trouble could not be avoided. Cassandra was told to stop, because does she really like to look like that in front of the gentleman himself? Better let him help. 
The girl returned to her former appearance and asked the guy if he was injured. However, she was told that the blood had already been stopped. Oh my god, was she that monster? The young man got up from the ground and was surprised that the wound, to his surprise, did not hurt at all. Does he really have to deal with that angel? He turned to a boy from his squad and asked him to help him walk. But he replied that he could not because the spiritual power of divine tears was already enveloping Seraphim. In this life, except for him, the Lord, no one can approach him, otherwise he will simply turn into ashes. Is he that strong? The seraphim was hanging on the steeple and was all glowing. The inscription above his head stated that he was a level 9 man from the Divine Light Squad and his soul threshold was 36,472. The guy thought that the angel must be very strong, because he has such a large threshold of souls. But what if he urgently decides to reincarnate? The master doesn't want to kill anyone. The angel coughed and turned to the great prince of darkness, Sebastian the Red Flame. It was the first time he had heard the name that this body bore, and Seraphim's voice sounds very familiar to him. The angel said that it had been several hundred years since they had fought without rest, but he had lost. The angel began to ask the Lord to save this mortal world. Sebastian asked the angel if he had brought him to this universe. Cassandra and the others from the squad were standing behind and did not hear the conversation of those two, so the girl asked what they were talking about. And why doesn't the master attack the seraphim? Her interlocutor replied that perhaps he was paying tribute to his longtime opponent. After all, the angel seraphim was one of the few in this life who was able to stand up to their master. Meanwhile, the angel replied to Sebastian that he did not know where he came from, but it was clear from his eyes that the Lord had placed the boy in Sebastian's body so that he would save this mortal world from her faction. The young man wondered why he had to save this world. Is he a savior? The angel explained that good and evil have been fighting for several thousand years, but there is a very thin line in this life. There are plenty of cruel and cunning scum in the army. The demon army of the great prince of darkness has unwaveringly loyal noble warriors. Saving the masses of the people is not an easy task, and neither Sebastian nor Angel can do it. However, he believes that the Lord did not just choose his name, the boy. The guy objected, because he's an ordinary person. He can't handle such a burden. The angel became unbearably hurt. The holy relics still support him, but his soul is about to be torn to shreds. He must pull out the holy relics, and set him free. The angel screamed violently in pain. The guy was watching all this and was at school to put it mildly. The angel shone strongly with divine light and screamed. Cassandra stood with Krasnogolov and laughed at his suggestion that their master was paying tribute. He just wants to torture him longer. The guy replied that he might have been mistaken. The soldiers asked the angel why he was doing this to Seraphim. This is already a flick. You need to fight with it. Miranda and Nilbar were still standing at the top of the cliff and watching everything that was happening. However, it seems that things are very bad and the army of people has already lost its fighting spirit. But Sebastian's slowness ignited the last of their strength. Through the pain and the last of his strength, the angel ordered the guy to act. And he pulled out the holy relics from the body of Seraphim. His hand caught fire, and the angel's body fell to the ground. He thanked the boy and said that he could make this world a better place. With his last breath, he said, Lord, save and have mercy on him. The young man asked himself with horror, why did something jump up inside him? The energy from the holy relics got inside and cannot be removed because he did not use protection. His voice in his head told him that. Is it him again? What is it, after all? He was told that he was an eternally raging flame and he was the very flame that burned in his eye. The guy asked the voice how he could get rid of it, because his body was going to burst. The voice replied that if there is no way to assimilate this energy, then it needs to be released and only he knows how divine tears work in this world. You need to follow your own feelings. Trust your feelings. In this way, the guy raised his hand up and a powerful explosion occurred, causing everything to light up and all people were thrown aside. Miranda and the commander stared at everything from above in shock. The guy in Sebastian's body did not expect this at all. A fiery streak formed below and looking at all this, he said that he did not do it on purpose. The army shouted, Long live the Lord. His entourage began to praise him for such a cool blow that completely broke the spirit of the enemy army. But they're wrong. He asked the flame if he was really in charge of the army behind him. He asked what the gentleman meant. After all, he is the supreme commander of the demon army. The guy replied that he understood. For a moment, he remembered the angel's words that he had to save this mortal world. The young man turned to Cassandra and Jai Fenghong and said that he had already caused irreparable harm, so now he could not bear death in horror again. Let them carry his order to everyone, and the whole army must retreat. He looked up. His warriors followed him and saw a bugle for an offensive. The guy was standing while his army was breaking past him and he didn't understand what had just happened. Who gave the order to attack? A voice in my head replied that the plan was to finish off the general of the enemy army, and then storm the city, wasn't it? The young man replied that he had not given the order, who dared to blow the bugle. 
In the sky, he saw a huge three-year-old dragon, on which stood a brunette with long hair. Did he give the order? On the first day of the guy's arrival in this world, the city turned to ashes. There was a tall stone figure standing near the stone wall, as if it were a knight. Eight signs in black, the sacred city, which is many thousands of years old, was destroyed overnight. There were ruins all around and all that remained of the once beautiful city were ruins and smoke. Demons flew across the sky and burned everything around. And people tried to escape from all this horror. Sebastian and his two loyal warriors, Cassandra and Nilbar, walked down the street like kings. The guy looked around and asked if it was a war. He knew that the war was cruel, but he did not think that it was so. It turned out to be even more terrible than he imagined. The nightmare made the young man feel sick and he covered his mouth with his hand. What an abomination. A voice in his head asked what happened to his majesty, to which he replied that he felt a little sick when he looked at the corpses. Cassandra looked at the gentleman and said that once he personally executed 3,000 prisoners of war, cut off their limbs and tortured them in another way. Therefore, such scenes should not surprise him. The guy was shocked by what he heard, and the girl asked what was wrong. Suddenly, a man ran down the street and called for help. He was running away from a huge dragon that wanted to grab him with its sharp claws. The soldiers of the army shouted at the dragon to grab the boy, while the rest of the people stood in a bunch and watched all this with fear. The guy was finally caught and his legs dangled in the air while the dragon carried him. The warriors laughed at such a performance. The dragon soared into the air and flew away into the clouds. And then, the man fell on the steeple. The demons ordered people to run away from here right now, so that their heels sparkled, otherwise they would not be well. One demon called the other an idiot because he commanded his master. When they turned back, they saw Sebastian and immediately got scared, rushed to their knees, because their offense deserves the most severe punishment. They're going to kill all the humans right now, and they won't waste any more time playing with them before killing them. The Prince of Darkness looked at the guy who was hanging on the steeple and told his warriors that they were doing well. They did not expect such praise and looked up in disbelief at the gentleman who asked Nobar if they had money with them. The commander replied positively, and the young man asked to lend them to him because he wants to make a bet. And the bet was this, if they could grab and kill a girl with a child in three minutes. The warriors were surprised, because such a simple task does not take much time. Does his majesty really want to provoke them? They took over the city and did a great job with it, and if they put that girl on the steeple, they'll get a big reward. The warriors thanked their master endlessly for such a chance, and the girl was swearing at the guy with tears in her eyes. Sebastian turned to Cassandra and asked if she would help him win, because she is a succubus. In the spring, the flame in my head kept saying that the gentleman had never done this before. The Lord ordered the girl with the child to run, and if she did not run, he would kill his son. The girl left the child and ran away, and he called his mother and cried. Cassandra sent an airy heart to the girl and the gentleman ordered her to mark the time. The warriors rushed after the woman and began shouting that she would not run away from them. The people in the crowd were struck with horror, because this girl was doomed and she was sent to certain death. The boy stood and cried, shouting after his mother that she would succeed. The demons were already catching up with the girl, literally stepping on her heels and she literally accelerated many times, which stunned the others. How is this even possible? The prince ordered to keep track of time, and the girl continued to run. She heard her son's cry to be careful and saw a huge shadow above her. She turned around and jumped over the beak of a huge bird. The demons were perplexed that she had escaped, and the bird had gored them. While she was running, the bird returned after her and the girl shouted to disappear, as if black cracks had formed around her eyes. She just took the birds and turned in the other direction while the girl continued to run on. People looked at her with admiration. Cassandra informed the guy that time was up, and he praised her, saying that it seemed his subordination had amazing abilities. He turned to the two demons who were supposed to catch the girl and said that even the two of them couldn't catch her. They opened his eyes to this world directly. The demons fell to their knees again, saying that the girl was somehow not like that. If you have made a bet, know how to lose. And now, let them prepare for punishment. The warriors looked at the Lord with fear as he continued to say that since they had successfully participated in the capture of the city, he would not punish them too much. All these prisoners are no longer their merit and they must let everyone go. The demons thanked the prince for saving their lives. The boy rushed to his mother also joyful, and suddenly she was doused with a terrible bright fire right in front of all the people and her son. The boy rushed to his mother with tears, but the prince ordered Cassandra to stun him and he fell face down on the ground, never reaching. Sebastian asked who it was and whose fire it was that hit the girl. Cassandra pointed her finger up and said it was from somewhere above. Suddenly, huge giant legs appeared nearby. And when the Prince of Darkness lifted his head up, he saw a big man, Yukon, a level 7 undead capable of synthesizing elements. He told the master that he was looking for a prisoner, and asked if she had been seen. The guy thought to himself that his subordinate, 
one of the commanders, looked so dangerous. Nilbar and Cassandra ordered the giant to descend immediately. Because he is taller than his majesty and it is disrespectful to stand like that. You can turn into an ordinary sized man and knelt down in front of the master with the words that you can appear before the face of the great prince of darkness. He asked where he got such audacity and how he dared to touch his toy with his fire. You can replied that this was not impertinence at all. He was only chasing a very important prisoner when he ran into his majesty. And just the day before, he moved to a new level of fireball technique and therefore could not resist showing the prince of darkness. Everything was on fire and Cassandra praised Yukon for the beautiful wall of fire, which made the lord angry. His majesty must be upset about something. What happened? Does he really sympathize with these people? Sebastian asked how it was possible, and the girl was nodding along. The boy was still lying face down on the ground and did not move. The lord came up to him, squatted down and tried to stop the flying ball of fire right at the boy's back. He stopped him with one hand and a wild heat washed over his skin, causing him to scream. His warriors stood in disbelief and asked if he was in a lot of pain. But how can he be hurt by such a small fireball? Is he unwell? You can ask the gentleman if he had injured his hand. To which Cassandra objected, saying that it was complete nonsense and such a light would not harm even her, let alone his majesty. You can agreed with the statement, because his majesty is the strongest master in the whole world. Therefore, he cannot believe that his fireball technique has attracted the attention of the Lord of Darkness. Looking at his subject, Sebastian thought about the fact that the number above his head had increased. Cassandra asked Yukon if he had forgotten that three years ago he had challenged the Prince of Darkness himself. Wasn't he then reformed from a scoundrel into what he is now? He thought that even if it were peacetime now, he would no longer dare to challenge the Lord. But today there are strange moods here, especially after the fight with Seraphim. Such behavior is not like him at all. Although the unexpected surge of power punished everyone. He was most likely nothing more than the power accumulated in the two tiers of the deity. Everyone says that the power of the two tiers of the deity is impossible to even imagine. Does this wonderful artifact have any effect on the Prince of Darkness? He is already silent about the fact that the Prince has lost to him now, so he can inflict wounds on him, and his current position in the army of demons. Ha <laughs> Well, to be afraid of wolves is not to go into the forest. After finishing his thoughts in his head, you can call his majesty. He will be grateful to him for any guidance, and he let the fire go up. The gentleman immediately thought of the fire barrier and saved himself in this way. Seeing the barrier, you can thought that the fire barrier is a strong technique, but his fire blade technique has become even stronger, hasn't it? His majesty's shield was pierced through by his blade. Cassandra asked in horror how such a thing was even possible. The guy thought to himself that he was in a lot of pain. Is he really so slow to defend himself? If this continues, then his subordinates, the Prince of Darkness, will cease to obey and respect him at all. And when did he manage to get so deeply into the role? But, this you can killed an innocent woman, so he just has to punch him in the face. The prince turned to the ever-raging flame and said that he wanted to tell him something. Before that battle with Seraphim, his mind was damaged, and he suddenly realized that now it was completely. He doesn't remember anything. The voice was surprised by this. The prince has completely forgotten all the techniques he once owned, but he really wants to teach Yukon a lesson. The lord produced a large ball in his hands, which began to glow with a blue light. Then, in the sky, he saw many, many colorful balls that intertwined into a large celestial network. A voice in his head kept saying that his majesty's opponent was just a nobody. The voice in the prince of darkness's head said that nature has its own energy. Ordinary living beings whose skills go beyond the perception of natural energy are called synesthetes. The threshold of souls is the ability of synesthetes to pass the energy received by nature through the channels of sensory perception. Theoretically, the higher the synesthetes' soul threshold, the stronger it is. To facilitate improvement and differentiation, the first people divided the threshold of souls into six large systems. The star energy system, the life energy system, the purgatory system, the elemental system, the death system, as well as the mind system. An ordinary synesthete can comprehend only a small part of the systems. But the master is able to comprehend the four thresholds of souls, purgatory, elementals, death and reason. It can be said that the prince has a rare gift. Now is the time to talk about it. The lord asked the ever-raging fire what happened next. How can he fix all this? A fireball flew into his cheek with terrible force, and he flew away. Yukon was surprised. Had he guessed that Sebastian was really weak? Cassandra and Nilbar shouted at his majesty not to leave them. Nilbar thought that their prince of darkness was really strange today. But if this time the girl helps him too, then the lord will finally lose all the rollbacks of his reputation. The guy was lying on the ground, in a small hole formed from the impact with which he landed. He moaned in pain and looked at the sky, not understanding what kind of lights were there. A voice in his head replied that it was his passive skill from the death system spirits of blood and flesh. One has only to take damage and they will heal immediately. 
Yukon looked at the prince and thought about whether he was going to recover and whether he could give him such an opportunity. A voice in his head warned the guy that Yukon was attacking again. Does this guy really think he can kill the master? Sebastian put his hand forward and summoned a fire barrier and turned to the loser who only touched him a little. The gentleman is not even tired, because the barrier is coming down slowly. Now he will fight with full force and this guy will find out that his master is still his master. You can start shaking again. Apparently his body is afraid of Sebastian out of habit, but he said that he would fight with full force, which he had never said before. It means that something is wrong and he can finally defeat him. You can rushed at the prince, and a barrier prevented him. They locked in a fight, while the subordinates looked at it. They could not understand what kind of technique Sebastian was using. They hope he's sane. A voice in his head asked what his majesty had just done. He replied that the fire barrier can block an attack, which means it can pass for a weapon. The voice replied that if you think about it that way, it's very good, but there are a lot of types of weapons, why? Sebastian asked, didn't he say he had lost his memory? Even if he had a large reserve of magic, he would not be able to use it. If he loses, what will happen to him next? You can call his majesty, holding a huge fireball over his head and asked him to show his new trick. The ever-raging flame said, Damn, this is the highest technique of throwing a fireball and this fire barrier will definitely not stand. The guy asked, And what should he do now in this case, because he was not looking for death? You can throw a ball at the gentleman and wished him dead. Besides, the Prince of Darkness doesn't seem to be going to defend himself at all. Does he really give in? The commander, standing next to Cassandra, said that even though he and the Prince of Darkness, they stood and watched everything that was happening with their mouths open. Cassandra looked into the pit formed by the ball and said that everything was too pompous. Yukon was flying in the air, while the prince was trying to recover downstairs. He stood up and shouted for everyone to attack. Some big demon obeyed him. He appeared thanks to the technique of summoning a demon of the 8th level of the elemental system. The commander, blacksmith is a demon of meteoric iron, the pituitary gland of a rusty dragon. Yukon said that to summon such a high-class creature, a lot of precious materials are needed. Why take everything seriously? His subordinates can only share their magic experience with him. Sebastian growled back at him that he had tried to kill him and for that he would beat him to death. You can immediately back down, asking the master to wait, because it's not fair to use demons like that. He's giving up, and he fell to the ground. In the battle against the Prince of Darkness, you can suffered a severe defeat. Sebastian stood on the roof of a tall building, illuminated by the light of a bright large moon. His silhouette and his beautiful wings were clearly visible from afar. Cassandra and the commander were standing below and could not understand what his majesty was doing there. Everyone is waiting for him at a meeting organized in honor of the victory. Nilbar asked the girl if she thought their master was not himself today. Although he usually does not show his respect to anyone, suddenly for the sake of one human child. Today his majesty did not behave like an ordinary demon king, killing everyone in a row. The girl replied to the commander that he was too curious today, but he did not agree. The girl said that before, despite all the words and deeds of his majesty, today he gave arguments reasonably, without resorting to guesswork. But today, for some reason, he began to doubt his majesty. A girl could only blame a demon. He couldn't even think of such a thing. The pink-haired woman replied with firmness in her voice that as long as he was his highness, no matter what happened, he would be her master. However, she feels that today his majesty exudes an inexplicable tenderness for her. Nilbar told her to be afraid for her words and asked if she could carry this boy because he was very tired. Cassandra objected, she was a girl. Shouldn't men treat them appropriately? Nilbar replied that she could change her shape, but he was met with a capricious refusal. Sebastian looked at the moon and couldn't figure out why it was so red. A voice in his head asked him what the gentleman had said, to which he was ambiguously answered. It's just that today he feels that everything is unreal. A voice in my head said that the gentleman was unrealistically cool, even though he did not understand what he was saying. Sebastian was surprised by this statement. In that situation, he was able to summon a demon, which requires basic possessions of demonic power and jewelry to summon. It does not depend on the level in any way. The guy replied that the flame was just flattering him, and they replied that the flame sincerely admired him, but you can't return what you spent, so he was a little sorry. The guy asked why the voice at the last moment did not let him kill Yukon, and the flame replied that he was very sorry. Despite his willfulness, he is still one of the 13 generals of the demon army. If the master takes out his anger on him for the benefit of humanity, then the army may be disappointed. Will it turn out that those people died in vain? The voice replied that it was a war. The Prince of Darkness asked the flame why it was always hovering near his left eye, and he was surprised that his majesty had forgotten even that. To be honest, flames can't really be considered life. He's just a passive skill, one of the highest skills in purgatory, and in the whole world, only one overlord has such a skill and that's him. 
He has very strong insight and analytical skills. What his highness sees above the heads of others, as well as the ability to anticipate the approach of danger, it's all thanks to the flame. Of course, he has other abilities, but he decided not to go into details, so it's not the same as a plug-in. The voice did not understand the strange word, but the guy did not explain. If the flame can notice, his highness heart is different from what it was before. Can he leave the guy? How do I leave it? Does the master no longer need him? Sebastian replied that this was not the case. He just wanted to say that if he was not his previous master, the ever-raging flame does not understand what the master is saying, and said that he did not disappear anywhere, which means that he is still his master. Does he have any idea how many people can get hold of him and use him before it's too late? A master should cherish the flame. The guy wondered to himself if the flame was angry, because his eyes seemed to be burning. Okay, no matter who the master is, will the flame stick by his side? He was told that they were originally born as a single whole. If the Lord dies, the flame will die. Now he understood everything. It was the first time he came to this world, which is full of hatred. But if he can find at least one honest partner, he can relax a little. Suddenly, memories of his mother surfaced in his head, who asked if he had already returned home. Then the girl asked Su Rufeng to teach her lessons. The guy said he needed to do something to get back. A voice in his head asked why the gentleman was saying such strange things today. Until he understands at least a little what is happening, he will continue to play along. There were prisoners in a large square who were preparing for their execution. Their heads were fixed in the hole of a wooden board. One of the prisoners turned out to be Anthony, Consul of the Divine City, Magic Level 5. In front of him stood a young man in a beautiful uniform and with long black hair and elf ears. He told his companions to look at these heroes of the Divine City. While they stormed Isidale, they did a very good job and they could not even think that one day they would be right in front of him. The long-haired man's name was Curtis. He is the head of the second demon squad with the eighth level of magic, synesthetic star energy system threshold of souls 18,712. The consul shouted at Curtis to finally shut up, because the city was already destroyed, and if he wanted to kill, then let him kill. Curtis continued to say that they are all heroes of the Divine City. His demon squad also needs human resources, which means that whoever wants to join their squad from the prisoners, he will pardon him. Consul Oram asked who would want to join their demon squad. Let him kill already and stop talking this nonsense. Next to the consul was a blonde man who hesitantly said that he wanted to join the demon squad, and the consul asked him what he was talking about. It turned out that it was the son of a cone. And he told his father that he had the opportunity to fix his life, and after he died, nothing could be fixed. The consul shouted at his son and told him not to dare to call him father anymore. Curtis mocked the relationship between father and son it's so touching. But how did the consul manage to become the kind of father who would drag his own son to the grave with him? The consul shouted that he didn't understand a damn thing and he was very sorry that when the elf city was destroyed, he didn't kill Curtis. Curtis ordered someone to release the consul's son and the rest who did not want to surrender were beheaded. Everyone had already begun to obey the order, but the red-haired Ji Fenghong said that it was possible to manage such a large number of important prisoners only in the presence of His Highness the Demon Lord. Behind him, a big demon asked the red-haired man why the hell to mess with this abnormal Curtis, but the guy besieged him and asked if he had said something wrong. Curtis turned to the guy and asked him what he called him, as you would expect from a small brat from the pathetic Demon Lord squad that stands up for humanity. Do they want to fight for the honor of their city? Jai threatened the elf so that he would not dare to call him human. Curtis said that today they would attack the elf army with two-headed dragons to clear the way. And before the battle, his majesty personally appointed the elf commander-in-chief. Does he doubt his abilities? Jai replied that he had been appointed commander-in-chief, but now they had already won the war. His powers are now limited by the fact that he, like Jai, is just one of the generals of the army of the demon lord. If he wants to do something that is not in his power, then he will have to deal with him first. What a madman. A real idiot who wants to lose his life. Curtis replied that the whole army had already noticed that the guy was protecting the prisoners and acting against orders, as if he were the commander-in-chief here. The elf will teach him a lesson. The elf spread his arms and in each of them he had a fire, pink and blue. It was an elven fire. The red-haired man was really angry that the elf wanted to kill him. Then he definitely won't back down. Suddenly, someone ordered them to stop. It was the Prince of Darkness himself. His Majesty is the Demon Lord. Curtis knelt in front of him, as did everyone else in greeting. Passing by, the consul called Sebastian by name and called him a freak. It seemed to the guy that all the people did not treat him very well. Curtis asked His Majesty why he came here and involuntarily the guy remembered this elf because it was he who was ordered to attack the city before his arrival, which led to a massive loss of life. And if you look at it, you can feel some kind of inexplicable anxiety. The guy asked the flame who this Curtis was and what he was like. 
He was told that he was one of the thirteen generals of the demon army, but also the lord of the elves. He is very strong and has the right to command the army, so he is special. He will not treat the master recklessly. Curtis wondered when the overlord would order him to rise. The master told him that the elf did not need to worry about his affairs. Let them continue to bend the knee. And I thought that giving orders is very exciting. Curtis saw a man in Nilbar's arms and asked him why he was carrying him. Instead of the commander, Cassandra quickly replied. She said that this was the will of the lord. And if you don't need to ask, then it's better not to ask. Curtis told the girl that one day he would be able to rip out her tongue. Sebastian thought that his subordinates seemed to be afraid of this Curtis too. After all, he is a representative of true power. He can be given all three points. The big demon Tian addressed his majesty at the same time as Jai Fenghao. A voice in his head told him that although Jai was one of the thirteen, he still did not have the authority to command. He's just a human child that his majesty sheltered during the war. He is filled with gratitude to his master and is distinguished by loyalty. Next, the flame began to talk about Bandicui's Lazazode, but everyone used to call him Theon. He is the bravest of the spider warriors, one of the thirteen generals, and controls the fifth group. On this earth, he is the most powerful earth elemental and synesthete of the elemental system. Great. Now Sebastian has familiarized himself with their positions and asked the flame what other generals there are. The voice said about some clown who was sitting with his knee bent a little further away. This is the illusionist Ji Xiaojuo, one of the thirteen generals, who controls the seventh group of the demon lord's army. Synesthetes are an extremely rare group of dreams, which belongs to the system of the mind. Among all the generals, he is the most mysterious. Next, the number one combat insect is the strongest warrior of all arthropods, who obeyed the master many years ago. He is one of the thirteen generals and the head of the sixth group. Synesthete is a vital energy system, and even if his intelligence is not high, but his killing power is truly frightening. Then comes old man Saichai, the head of the third army group. He is an elder among the army of the demon lord. He has been with his majesty since the beginning of the creation of the army. He has great erudition and high authority. Combat capability is not under the authority of the elf lord Curtis. Next, the head of the tenth group is Mandini who is too big, so he lives outside the city. And Yukin, the head of the eighth group, who was mentored by his highness today, is still being treated. Elder Saichai was asked to get up from his knees, and he asked what happened to the little man. The commander replied that he himself did not understand his majesty's intentions. He asked the old man to help hold the boy at least a little, because it is not very convenient for him to follow the master like that. The elder replied that he did not dare to object and he took the child in his arms. The ever-raging flame continued his story, talking about Patriarch Anthony's throne during important meetings. But now it belongs to the master. To pass sentence on the Patriarch while sitting on the throne that belonged to him, isn't that too insulting to him? Let's not have time to think about it. The Lord ordered everyone to get up from their knees. Sitting on this throne, he thought that perhaps the Emperor was experiencing a similar feeling. Suddenly, a large arrow flew past Curtis, right next to his face, and the flame announced a first-degree threat. Cassandra tried to stop her, but nothing happened and the arrow flew straight towards the emperor, crashing into the throne a centimeter from his face. For the first few moments, Sebastian didn't understand what had happened. From the force of the arrow's blow, the throne fell back and the Prince of Darkness with it. All the subjects looked at him in shock while he was lying on his back. He wished he knew if he was okay when Cassandra and the commander ran up to him. Did some killer decide to do this? Jai jumped in the direction the arrow was coming from to find out who dared to do this. Numerous explosions were heard outside the walls of the buildings, and the battle continued for a very long time. Apparently, this killer is a tough nut to crack. Nilbar asked with what force this arrow was fired and the girl shone that her wrist still hurts. Probably the best of the highest class there. The fool Zhang Chang wouldn't think of lifting a finger without an order. Cassandra said she wanted to go and help Jai Feng Hong. Curtis said she didn't need to go there because she was perfectly protecting his majesty and they couldn't take that risk anymore and let them give him the killer. The elf took off into the sky and flew in the direction where Jai is fighting the killer. After a while, the fighters returned and reported to the Prince of Darkness that the assassins had been captured. It was a blonde and some guy, they also had wings. The girl screamed to be released and the consul recognized her as Dolores. He called her an idiot and asked why she had returned. Jai told the prince that Curtis had brazenly appropriated all his merits because he had found the killers and eliminated them too. The elf answered him to look at himself better. And if the elf hadn't come to the rescue, the guy wouldn't be standing here right now. And he was covered in bruises and abrasions, with bumps on his face. The girl told them to stop because his highness would judge them now. The guy looked at the two prisoners and wondered who they were. The killers fell to the ground and started coughing violently. 
and the girl, Dolores, called Sebastian an idiot. She turned out to be a divine level saint, with level 3 magic. Sebastian thought about being scolded again, but when he saw the girl's face, he thought she was cute. The pink-haired woman shouted at Dolores how dare she seduce the Lord of Darkness, to which the blonde pretended to be a fool, and asked what this girl was talking about. Angrily, Cassandra put everything on the shelves that the blonde calls the best man in the world an idiot, and she wants to say that this is not an impudent and uncovered seduction. She understands everything, so why is she pretending? The girl said with a tremor in her voice that she did not want to discuss such topics with an abnormal succubus. Cassandra swung at the blonde with the words that then her master would definitely love her. However, the lord shouted enough and told the girl that he would settle this problem. She immediately obeyed her master. Today they captured the divine city. They all did a great job and the lord is extremely grateful to everyone. At these catches, all the warriors stood open mouthed in disbelief because God had never said such a thing to his subjects before. A demon was flying from somewhere above and everyone was staring at the sky. The Lord did not understand why everyone was so surprised by this exemplary speech. Suddenly, a voice in his head realized why the overlord was talking so strangely. Previously, when he announced the gathering of the commanders, he only cursed and blamed everyone and praised very little. But thank you. This is the first time this has happened today and it's incredible. He put his fist to his face. The guy exhaled and thought that in a previous life he was a real tyrant. Sebastian ordered Nilbar, who was standing next to him, to hold a meeting in his place, and he was very surprised, because how can this be? Isn't he a military advisor? It's time to start practicing. Today's meeting on the problem will be held by Nilbar instead of Mr. Sebastian notified all his subjects about this and they were very surprised by this decision. Nilbar began his speech by saying that his majesty had just praised them and he hoped that they were all grateful for the boon and would continue to serve for the benefit of the army of the Prince of Darkness. The commander spoke very beautifully and he really should do it instead of the master. There are three important issues their army needs to consider before they can start celebrating victory. First, how they need to deal with the prisoners they have captured in this city. Secondly, what should they do with ancient books of this kind? And thirdly, what will be the next stage of their actions for their troops, who are currently scattered around the Divine City? The Lord praised Nilbar for his speech, and he thanked him as a subject of the king, and asked him to consider these problems personally. With grief, Sebastian agreed, noting to himself that this skeleton is a real cheat, because he shifted all responsibility to the guy. Well, the Lord appealed to his respected commanders so that everyone would speak out about solving these problems. Let them be Democrats for a while. Curtis asked the Prince of Darkness, do these issues need to be discussed? The human race is their eternal enemy and their army must be destroyed immediately. Sebastian asked what about the rest of the people, and the rest do not exist, because the entire human city must be destroyed, is that clear to everyone? His Majesty said that they had a democratic discussion, and whether it was clear to everyone or not, in any case, everyone was obliged to speak out. And why did the gentleman suddenly have such a dislike for Curtis? The elf replied that he did not dare to contradict the master. He only felt that there was no need for discussion. But since his highness wanted everyone to express their opinion openly, in that case, let each commander share his thoughts on how to deal with prisoners of war. And they will start with the elders. The elder said that he was holding a child in his arms only because his highness had ordered him to be taken. And this does not mean that he sympathizes with people. The clown said that when people captured their city, they didn't leave anyone alive, so all people need to be killed. Theon advocated beheading, because such an execution is worth watching. The pink-haired one decided to refrain, because she would do as her master told her, if only he would be happy. The elf told Cassandra that she didn't seem to care about the future of their army at all, and the girl asked why she should care about it. She is the head of his majesty's personal security detail, and she only cares about his life and she's not interested in anything else. Jai said that he belongs to the human race, but hates it with all his soul, so he also asks his highness to punish the prisoners. Nilbar told the prince that there would always be a sworn feud between their army and the human race. Sebastian thought to himself that his position was clear enough, wasn't it? They don't remember anything from his face, or he underestimated the extent of the hatred between evil spirits and people. There's been some kind of strategic mistake. Curtis asked if his majesty had listened to the opinions of those present and what he doubted then. Let him give the order to kill the prisoners as soon as possible. That's right. The son of the cone turned to them to get their protection. And in that case they would make him a slave to their army of demons. Why is his highness silent? Does he approve of this plan? Murder is murder. In any case, all people are not his matchmakers, nor his brothers. In his position, there is no reason to object to him. Anyway, he doesn't really know anything about this world. Suddenly, he remembered Seraphim, who asked to save this mortal world. 
barely able to pronounce the words. The gentleman wanted to say something, but the elf beat him to it, ordering the prisoners to be killed. Everyone stared at Curtis for a moment as he passed sentence. The consul's son was released, and his father shouted at Tom that he was a traitor. The demon swung over the heads of the prisoners and the consul shouted that the divine city never surrendered. The blonde screamed, but the next moment the prisoners were killed. The girl turned away from the sight at the same time as the lord. And the elf asked him what happened, because when he saw the execution of these people, he suddenly felt sympathy for them. Sebastian pretended that he just had a headache. Curtis had heard Yukon say that his highness had punished him with the help of a high-class demon. Yukon's fighting skills are certainly high, but using such a technique is a waste of energy. The elf pointed at the guy who was lying on the ground and said that this guy was the saint's personal guard. Although his might is comparable to the strength of 13 evil spirit soldiers, however, his highness could not even keep up with his single arrow. And this human child, the lord not only saved him, but even brought him with him to the victory celebration meeting. We also need to add to all this the strange behavior during the battle. Does it not seem to everyone here that the gentleman is behaving extremely strangely today? Is it possible that the weapon that Seraphim used during the battle had some effect on their master's personality? The elf screamed right in Sebastian's face that he was not the Prince of Darkness. Who is he? The guy frantically began to think how Curtis found out his secret. Or is it just a guess? No, he had been hatching this plan for a long time and now he has pinned it to the wall. The Prince of Darkness replied to Curtis that he had weapons and eternal tears with him, and he still doubted his status. What a meanness this is. Curtis believes that all this does not prove that they are facing a real Prince of Darkness. The guy asked what he could prove then, and the elf in response formed a pink elf flame, and told the prince to block his ghost flame. Cassandra called the elf an idiot, but he stopped her and said that the Prince of Darkness would never refuse a challenge thrown at him, and earlier the girl could not hold him back either. What's the matter today? What is she trying to hide? Cassandra wanted to say something, but Chai interrupted her, saying that the Lord was still the Lord of Darkness and there was nothing to worry about him so much. The elf noticed that the guy had said the right thing, and it should be nothing. Nobar said that his highness is indeed acting strangely today, but he believes that he will definitely prove his status. Sebastian privately called the commander a chameleon, and asked the voice what kind of strange ghostly flame it was. The voice replied that it was the most powerful fighting technique of the elven people, and the fire barrier could not cope with it now. Judging by his opponent's condition, the barrier would be instantly destroyed. What kind of joke is this? Was this Curtis just waiting for an opportunity to kill him? Heck, he had calculated everything. A purple ball of flame flew straight at the gentleman, and he thought that he was definitely finished. However, everything was illuminated by a red explosion, and the elf did not understand what had happened. A red demon girl rose up and she asked Curtis if he had put a lot of effort into this bundle of energy. The elf is not doing this for the sake of checking, but for the sake of killing the master. The gentleman was saved by Miranda, the red-haired beauty in the red suit. She is the Empress of Vampires, the commander-in-chief of the Army of Evil Spirits. The gentleman stared at the girl, and she asked him if he was okay. The guy was fascinated by the beauty of this diva, while the others greeted Miranda, and the elf asked why she had come. Wasn't she chasing after the escaped archbishop? The girl did not lose her head and asked Curtis, since when should he care what she was going to do and where she was going to go? And also, she wants to ask him why he used Ghost Flame against his highness. Miranda came and now it will not be so easy to overthrow the Prince of Darkness. But the elf did not voice these thoughts, but only told the girl that he wanted to test the real powers of his master, and he also did not mind. Miranda said that she was surprised by the strange behavior of the Prince of Darkness, to which the elf replied that she should also think about whether his majesty was the real Prince of Darkness after all. Miranda stood face to face with Curtis and asked who gave him the right to question his highness. If he wanted to die, she would end him now. And she opened her mouth, showing her beautiful sharp vampire fangs. The elf admitted that Miranda almost scared him. At this time, the Lord was having a dialogue with the eternal flame in his head about how Miranda seemed to be very devoted to him. He replied that absolutely. After all, the vampire queen and his highness have lived through a hundred years of friendship together. The two of them even founded a common army of demons. And this girl is the only one who can resist his power, but she willingly helps his loyal subjects. Judging by what the flame says, they don't just have a work relationship, but rather a close friendship, right? The voice replied that he would not dare to guess because this was his majesty's personal matter. However, Miranda's loyalty is beyond doubt. Meanwhile, the girl asked the elf if she had scared him. He said that she likes to show her spiritual pressure, how narcissistic she is. She is not worthy of the ninth level. Jai reflected on Miranda's serious intentions and that Curtis should not have been impertinent to her. Cassandra stood next to the red-haired man and sweating. She thought that since she had already demonized once today, and these two started a fight. The only thing that could stop them was, the Lord rose from the throne and silenced everyone. 
He told Miranda that he and Seraphim were tired of the feud and therefore Curtis had doubts about his strength. However, he never learned how to refuse subordinates in a duel, whether it was Yukon or Curtis. With great difficulty, some still support him, and he gradually regains his place. Even if Miranda did not appear, the ghostly flame is just a childish prank for him. Miranda said that it was all her recklessness. She knelt down in front of the Lord and asked the Prince of Darkness to take over the authority to solve problems after the occupation of the Divine City by the Army of Darkness. Everyone else also knelt down, supporting the proposal. The Lord thought that they were all very cunning. Curtis continued to stand in place until Miranda addressed him as the second commander of the regiment and asked what he thought. He knelt down on one knee and replied that his majesty himself allowed everyone to express their opinion. But since everyone supported him, it means that no one has an opinion. Sebastian stood and looked at his subordinates, thinking that Miranda was very cool because she had single-handedly changed the whole situation. If it's zeal, then he should. He asked everyone, why has the war been dragging on for a hundred years? They exterminate people over and over again, but they nevertheless constantly fight back. With every rebuff, they get stronger, so what's the point of all this? Curtis replied to the gentleman that to execute one for the edification of hundreds, instilling fear, which is their tool in the extermination of mankind. Sebastian objected, because the more oppression, the more resistance. Then a large number of threats and murders will be in vain. His Highness has such high thoughts, he should be given instructions. Curtis seemed to want the gentleman to give at least some instructions so that he could expose him later. However, the Lord of Darkness said that the way of doing it is this, first you need to attack the heart, and then storm it. First the heart, then the army. All the subjects sat in complete silence and stared at the master, because they did not understand what he meant at all. The guy remembered to himself that it might have been on a history exam. But he replied to Nilbar that recently, while thinking for a long time, this conclusion came to his mind. After explaining the meaning of this to everyone, Nilbar felt that his highness was really thinking very deeply. The subjects are extremely delighted. Miranda also believes that attacking the heart first and then the army is a very deep conclusion. Curtis stood silently, thinking about what had happened. Sebastian was glad that he had puzzled his subjects. It is not surprising how these demons could keep up with the wisdom of Mr. Kung Min. Then he can take advantage of tuition. The gentleman raised his hand up and told everyone to listen to his order. Let them stop the extermination immediately. The elf objected to his highness, because had he really forgotten about the hatred between humanity and demons. Theon agreed with Curtis, because today a lot of the Lord's subjects died during the siege of the city. How can you not kill people for this? Can you still make friends with people? Sebastian was adamant and said that anyone who disobeys the order will be killed immediately. At first glance, it may seem that they have won a complete victory in the battle for the Divine City, but this is only a religious city, humanity has a more real power. They have been fighting for many years, but do they know their opponent? Know your opponent and know yourself and you will be invincible. Again, no one understood the strange cry. If they want to defeat an opponent, then first of all they need to get to know him first. After all, what is humanity afraid of, striving for, and believing in? Have they all thought about it? In general, humanity is written about in their books. And to destroy these books is to destroy their chances of victory. They must save the books, and then they will necessarily conduct a thorough study. What do they think about this? The gentleman stood above the others and waited for at least some kind of reaction. His subjects were greatly impressed by how deeply their Prince of Darkness thinks. It's all very reasonable and very effective. Now it is only necessary. The Lord stood in a position that showed his gorgeous silhouette. He announced aloud a plan where he would lock up and torture all the murderers, and then personally interrogate them. A large army will be temporarily placed outside the city to expect punishment. This concludes the meeting. Everyone replied that it would be fulfilled. Only the elf thought otherwise. In the Divine City, in the Imperial Palace, Sebastian stood on the balcony and leaned on the railing. He thought that the majesty of the Divine City could surely be compared to the Constantinople of the 12th century. It can be destroyed by the Army of Darkness in one day and it will be difficult to restore. Since he came to this world, he has been plunged into numerous events and has not had time to react. Looking back, he made a lot of stupid decisions. Now he is free and needs to think about what to do next. The guy asked the Eternal Flame if he knew everything he was thinking about. He replied that he would not dare. Only if there are subjects in his head who are praising himself all the time. He can only maintain a dialogue with him and also take the initiative to start a dialogue with the master. Cassandra appeared from behind and informed the gentleman that his bath was ready. Sebastian turned to her and asked her by the fire how to fold his wings. This can only be done if you completely relax and think about really putting them together. Later, the guy was relaxing in a huge bathtub. In his world, he could rarely afford to take such a large bath. These muscles and the body are so strong, even though the wings are growing, but there are no wounds on the back. 
the wounds from humans and you can have healed. How cool it is to have the ability to regenerate quickly. Suddenly Cassandra appeared in the bathhouse, and the gentleman was very scared. She said that his majesty had a very difficult day today and even though it wasn't the palace of darkness, it still looked like she had come to take care of the master while he was taking a bath. The guy did not expect this at all. His mother came into the blonde man's room and asked what he was doing at such a time. The teenager frantically began to turn off the video, thinking that he was just an ordinary high school student and now he was at an age when interest in the female body was at its peak. Therefore, when a girl with such a figure is in front of him, how can he control himself? Cassandra approached the guy's face and asked why his nose was bleeding. He replied that it was probably just stuffy in here. The girl rushed to hug him, saying how handsome he was today. But Sebastian disagreed in what place is it beautiful? They all think that he is strange today. The girl replied that this was their opinion. She also thinks that his majesty is exactly like that today. And this gives her the opportunity to protect his majesty. The guy noticed that the girl seemed to be licking her lips. Is she a true fan of demons? Yes, who opposes such a thing? Not noticing any response, the girl asked if the gentleman did not like her. If you think about it that way and omit all the events, the previous owner of this body would certainly not have missed the chance to have fun. It's as simple as that, but he still can't. However, he must not be exposed. The master told Cassandra that he was a little tired during the siege, so she would have to do everything herself. The girl obeyed and disappeared under the water. Suddenly, outside the door of the bathhouse, he was called and asked if there was time. For a couple of seconds, the guy remembered whose voice it was, and then realized that Miranda had come. When he came out of the bath and wrapped himself in his bathrobe, the girl told him to spend less time with that girl. Is the redhead jealous? He told her that he would be prudent. The guy thought to himself that he needed to watch his expressions and behave very naturally. He asked Miranda why she needed him so late, to which she asked what he was talking about. He didn't realize what time it was. She's dressed up like that and speaks openly all in the forehead. It seems their relationship is not quite simple. Miranda praised the gentleman for his clever, deep speeches that he made at the last meeting. The guy was surprised at first, but quickly pulled himself together, cleared his throat and said that there was nothing wrong with it. They were both standing on the balcony and looking into the distance when Miranda suddenly spoke. They have been arguing with him for several decades now, but she would always agree with his decisions anyway, because the army of the demon lord is their common energy. She hopes all the time that he will be able to achieve his goal. With a chuckle in his head, the guy asked the voice what other purpose it was, and he replied that these were the personal affairs of the gentleman and the flame did not know anything about them. Miranda has negotiated the conquest of the world. This was something that the predecessors could achieve. If she helps to make this happen, then they will be able to achieve brilliant success. But in the past, Sebastian had done nothing but perfect new skills, impersonating a demon. Undoubtedly, he is gifted by nature itself, owning systems. There are very few people in this world who could compete with him. But this exorbitant force has also become a huge obstacle for the army. Although the army of demons completely besieged the city, and a lot of strong subordinates gathered under its command, but they all just buckled under the rule of the Prince of Darkness. Each of them has their own goals. Besides her, Sebastian can't trust anyone. Together, her strength and fears will help him achieve any desire. The army has no single purpose, nor do they have the highest values or beliefs. It would seem that there are so many of them, but they are actually an unorganized rabble, especially after receiving the spiritual power of two divine tears and an eternally raging flame. The Lord's selfishness began to manifest itself even more, to direct his power of demons against the advance of humanity. Does he know that this war is putting a lot of pressure on the army? If they lose, then the demon army may disintegrate. She keeps telling the ruler that the army cannot rely solely on its own strength, and the government of the state cannot be engaged only with the help of military might. But he never listens, and the resentment between them grows more and more. He knows, because she sees him going further and further down the wrong path. How much despair is there in her? The girl looked at her friend with a sad face, putting my hands on his shoulders. He started to reply, but Miranda kept talking. His performance at the meeting is completely different from what it was before. It still doesn't make sense, but it doesn't compare to the past anymore. She is very impressed. Sebastian said that he had actually rethought a lot recently, and he wanted the girl to do him a favor. Three days, she should help him strengthen his subordinates. Although he ordered the attack on the city to be stopped, however, there are those among them who are full of prejudice and can do something. There's also one child he saved, and two assassins who need to be protected. He wants to spend three days and think carefully about the future of the army. The girl replied, let's obey her friend. After a while, the guy was lying on the roof of the castle, very tired today. But there was no sleep in either eye. The voice in my head was surprised that the gentleman was talking about sleep. It's really been a strange day today. The guy asked, did he say something wrong? The flame said that of course it was not so. 
They are a kind of demons and they never sleep. The guy, shocked by what he heard, rose from the roof. Now he understood why Miranda was surprised that he had said she had come too late. Great, then three days equals almost five. The guy asked the ever-raging flame to take him to one place. When he took off on his beautiful wings into the sky, Cassandra called after him, asked where he was going and how they hugged her. The gentleman replied to her that in three days they would be able to continue what they had started. The young man was wearing only a bathrobe and the voice of the plans told him that it was not a good idea to go out in this form. However, the master does not see anything wrong with this. Then he asked why he had learned so much magic and why none of it worked. Let the flame teach him magic immediately. The voice asked how his majesty could forget even that. High magic usually contains four mandatory items, spells, magical order, basic spiritual power, and mental sensations. With the exception of spiritual power, the other three had to be preserved in memory. The guy asked how much he could learn all this in the end. The flame replied that his mental sensations had to be preserved, so with his talent, it would take him two years to learn everything. The gentleman couldn't believe that it would take so much time to study. It's been a lot longer than he thought. Sebastian landed on the ground after flying through the night sky. And the flame asked the gentleman what he was going to do in this place. So far, no one is forcing him. The guy landed near the city library of the holy city. Recreating power is not a matter of five minutes, but you also need to manage subordinates who are like wolves and tigers. To cope with this, you will have to take up arms. The guy asked the flame how long the war between demons and humans lasted, and he was told that it was more than a hundred years. Is there any classic work that has been published by people about this war? The gentleman sat down at the table on which he piled a whole stack of books. Flame asked if he needed to read a lot of books there, and the guy replied that he also had three days in total. Flame asked if he would have time to read all this in just three days, and Sebastian said that sometimes he wouldn't be so sure about it, but when it comes to books, he has plenty of confidence. Let it be the literature of the hostile camp, but the words of the sacred books usually do not go beyond the limits. His experience, his character, his social connections, the origin of his subordinates, as well as the economic power and political system of the demon army and humanity are all good opportunities to become a demon lord. Before finding a way out of here, he must get used to this role as soon as possible. And these books, his first step towards understanding this world. Sunrise was already approaching over the castle. The sky lit up with a bright orange light and Sebastian asked if it had been three days already. A voice in his head told the gentleman that he had looked through a lot of books. He replied that yes, it was very interesting actually, but there was still so much unread. The guy came out of the building and saw a crucified man on a huge cross. He came closer and saw a figure in a snow-white robe and a man with long blonde hair. It turned out to be the body of a seraphim. When Sebastian stood and looked up at the body of seraphim, he asked his soldiers who did it. He was told that Curtis had sent people here and asked his majesty to decide what to do next. This undoubtedly turned out to be a problem. Seraphim is a religious leader for all mankind, and for humanity and demons, a great figure. How do I get rid of his remains? I would not like to do such a job carelessly. The master ordered the body to be lowered down first, but someone stopped him. It was Miranda and she was against letting him down. She ordered his majesty to change his clothes, because he is standing in the square in only a bathrobe. The servants rushed to obey the order, but the guy stopped them. Is he going to be changed on the street? He felt so awkward while he was changing clothes in the servant's circle. Miranda called out to him and said she wanted to ask him to go to a place with her. They found themselves near a tall stone tower, which turned out to be a prison of religion. He had just read about it in a book. It was strange. Why were there no windows at all at the top of the tower? Miranda hurried the gentleman. A religious prison is not an ordinary prison. A totemic structure where people fight demons. Demons are being judged here. He turned to the girl who was walking in silence, and did not understand why she had been silent since they entered here. The smell was just disgusting everywhere, and the guy put his hand to his face so as not to feel it. They were climbing a high staircase, and the higher they went, the stronger the smell of blood. At last they came to the gate, where there were guards who greeted his majesty. Miranda ordered them to open the gate. When the doors opened, the young man saw a red light in front of him, which seemed to be dragging him there. Then it turned out to be some kind of torture room, where many different demons were chained to the walls. The guy felt sick from all the horror, but he tried to calm himself down slowly, because there is no way to give yourself away. He looked back at Miranda, who was standing behind him, and a voice in his head screamed about a level 1 warning. The guy suddenly felt so bad that his legs gave way. He told himself that there was no way to fall, because he had a high threshold of souls. It is only necessary to inspire him. After a while, he was able to stand firmly on his feet. Although he also felt a cold pressure on his back, he can resist Miranda's spiritual pressure. Miranda's servants sank to the floor, unable to stand it. 
Sebastian shouted the girl's name at the top of his voice. As if she had woken up from a dream, she guiltily said that she was losing control. The Lord said they had to get out of here. He looked up and saw a man who was screaming to be released, because he had no blood left. The girl recognized the commander, but she just asked for her forgiveness. After all, there is no way to save her. Miranda put her hand to the martyr's forehead. What century do they live in? People still believe that vampire blood prolongs life, even in human encyclopedias. This has already been refuted. However, such things are also common in the guy's world, and they also say that he will not dream of such a thing. Having personally visited a place like this, no matter from which angle you look, all the evil of humanity manifests itself here. This is the abyss. He doesn't want to stay here any longer. He looked at Miranda and thought that it wasn't her fault. She stood on the sidelines with her back to him and cried. The gentleman put his arm around her shoulders and said that they were her race and at the same time his people. He shares this responsibility with her. Therefore, he asks the girl not to carry this heavy burden alone. The girl replied with all her hatred that she wanted to destroy all mankind. She will collect mountains of corpses and do many, many more bad and terrible things with them. She wants the Divine City to disappear from the face of the earth once and for all. The guy hugged the girl even tighter from behind and said he would sort it all out. Let him believe him. At this time, there were crowds of captive people and crowds of demons in the Divine City in the Sacred Square. Dragons circled overhead, casting shadows on the ground. People with ropes around their necks stood and cried, because they didn't do anything. They don't want to die. People were shouting and asking what was going on. Is this a public execution? The damned demons are destroying their people. Someone has heard that they want to exterminate all mankind. When will the troops of the human army come to rescue them? Curtis was standing on the roof, next to Jai, who did not understand why the Lord had arranged the execution, if he himself had forbidden them. Curtis said that it wasn't Sebastian at all before, and he's absolutely sure of it, but for some reason no one believes him. Before that, he wanted to expose Sebastian so that everyone would turn away from him. But now he decided to respond with cunning to cunning. He does not believe this gentleman. He may be more capable than the last one. Suddenly, Sebastian appeared in the air on his wings. He addressed the people of the Divine City. He has learned horror from their knowledge, sees fear in their looks. Those who are with him prosper, those who are against him perish. Whoever obeys him, he will not kill him. Today, he gathered them all here to voice a few points. He had heard that they believed that the blood of demons prolongs life. Besides, the higher the threshold of souls, the higher the nutritional power. He bit his finger until it bled and showed it to the people, saying that then his blood was the most nutritious of all. Who wants to try it? 